Good day, friends. So glad to be with you wherever you are at, at home. Maybe you're at uptown having a walk and you're listening to different podcasts and different YouTube programs and church services. Or maybe this is your first time. Maybe you saw the Wawa Goose background backdrop here. I, I want to share a few things about the Wawa Goose. Welcome to church service today. Well, since 1963, the Wawa Goose has welcomed visitors from around the world to the northern town of Wawa. And here's some interesting facts. Did you know that the Wawa Goose Monument is one of the most photographed landmarks in North America? It's the largest of its kind in Canada. It was originally developed to attract tourists back to Wawa after the highway bypassed the downtown core. Well, the first goose, it was also made of plaster and it didn't stand up to the weather. Now the goose is made of the steel. Uh, the goose comes from the meaning of the word Wawa, which means wild goose or land of the big goose in Ojibwe. Stopping Tom Connors sang the song Little Wawa about a goose that stayed behind when her lover gander goo got shot down with an arrow. I bet you didn't know that one. Well, even though it looks like a national uh, monument, it really isn't. Only the uh, beaver and the maple leaf uh, holds those national cultural statuses. So the Canada goose is not a a official symbol of Canada, but it definitely is an official symbol to those who of you who live here in Wawa. Well, a few years back, I had the opportunity to attend Maple Community Church in uh, Barrie. Uh, each year they host an annual retreat slash training slash investing uh, where Reverend Jay Davis he invests into young pastors, old pastors, church leaders across our districts and EPI uh, which stands for Emerging Pastors Initiative is, is just full, it's jam packed with uh, welcome to the ministry material and, and it, it was about a church model that is attainable no matter what size a building is you're in or you attend or no matter what size your community is what matters is the size of your heart, the size of your heart. And during this EPI, this Emerging Pastors Initiative, uh, out of the devotions uh, that were given us, the resources that Pastor Jay passed on to us, uh, uh, he had a lesson from the geese. Listen to this. As each bird flaps its wings, it creates uplift for the bird following it. By flying in a V formation, the whole flock adds 71% greater flying range than if it flew by itself. Well, here's the lesson in that. People who share a common direction and in a sense of community can get to where they're going quicker and easier because they are traveling on the same trust of one another. My, my question for you today is, who are you trusting? Who are you trusting to take you to where you're going? Here's a deeper question. Do you know where you're going? Do you know where you will end up? Are you in the right community? Are you in the, uh, are you in the same common direction, going in the same place? Hold that in your heart. Here's another uh, lesson from the geese. Whenever a goose falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the drag and resistance of trying to fly alone, and so it quickly gets back into formation to take advantage of the lifting power of the bird immediately in front. Friends, that's what it's all about. Oh my, you don't have to do life on your own. That's good news, isn't it? You, you... You don't have to do life on your own. Follow the greatest bird. Hallelujah. Jesus is our, our greatest friend. He is our greatest helper. He is our greatest. Oh, he is our savior. Are you following him today? Let him take the lead. Here's another lesson from, from the geese. 
Uh, when the lead goose gets tired, it rotates back into formation and another goose flies in its point position. Uh, um, if we had as much sense as geese, we would stay in formation with those who are headed where we want to go and be willing to accept their help and, and be as well as give our help to others. It, it, it pays to take churns doing the hard task and sharing leadership. With people as with geese, we are interdependent on each other's skills and capabilities and, and, and unique alignments of gifts, talents, and resources. Oh, I know some of you essential workers that are still working day in and day out and, and, and doing, doing jobs that we are essential for our communities to survive. I know there's not as many people working alongside you and, and, and you're taking on a little bit more work, maybe a lot more work of, of two or three other workers to, and, and, you're, and you're feeling it this week. You're feeling the, you're feeling the, the burn, you're feeling the tiredness, the, the, the sense of, of when is this going to end? Well, friends, you're doing such a good job. Keep up the good work. Stay strong. Keep, keep focusing on the end goal. Uh, check, check where your heart is. Know that what you're doing is good for us all. I, I mean, I wish, we, I wish you could stay home. I wish you could, uh, but you're on the front lines. And so I commend you and I thank you. I thank the doctors and the nurses and, and our uh, response, uh, uh, emergency police, uh, fire department and, and ambulances and oh my goodness, the, uh, we are so grateful for your effort. Listen to what the geese do. The geese in the formation honk from behind to encourage those in front to keep up the good work. We need to make sure our honking from behind is encouraging and not something else. In groups where there is great encouragement against great odds, the production is much greater. The power of encouragement is much greater. At the center of encouragement is the word courage, and at the root of courage is a Latin word that means heart. Maybe honking, friends, strengthens the heart. And so, honk. Well, I don't want to tell you to honk your horn at, at every essential worker that you see or, or, or someone that is, is not, um, uh, 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 someone that's not doing well at this time, that is in the state of, of despair or loneliness or, or, or insecure. But, Encourage them. Encourage their heart to go on. Encourage their heart that 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 this is this this is only temporary. This isolation it, it may seem like it's forever, but it's it's for a good cause. Amen. And if we can just isolate a little longer, then and COVID nineteen will be will be. Uh, uh, gone and, and, and getting rid of. And so honk from behind, encourage one another. When a, when a goose gets sick or wounded or, or shot down, two geese drop out of formation and follow it down to help and protect it. They stay with it until it is either able to fly uh, again or dies. Then they launch out on their own with another formation or catch up with the flock. If we have as much sense as geese, we too will stand by each other in difficult times as well as when we are strong. I, I, love, I love that little illustration of the Wawa goose. I love being in Wawa. My wife and my daughter and I have been in Wawa. We will be in Wawa three years come August. I mean, that's, I mean, we are just enjoying our time. In fact, um, in our first year, uh, we, that we were here, not two months later, 
in October, I believe it was October, that's where I went to Barry for that uh, uh, Emerging Pastors Initiative. That's where we, I came across day two, where we were reading our devotions that, that day, the, a lesson from the geese, a lesson from the geese. And, and I put my hand up and I said, hey, I'm from Wawa. I'm in Wawa. There's a big goose in Wawa. And, and everyone kind of had a good laugh and I got to be known as the guy from Wawa. <laughs> um, but, but you know what? Just being here for two months, serving the people, serving the church at the capacity that it was at two and a half years ago. <laughs> when I went down to Barry for three days for that Young Pastors Initiative uh, uh, retreat, I knew I was where I was supposed to be. My heart knew that it was confirmation for me that I was in Wawa because God brought me here. God brought me here. When we check our hearts, when we look at our hearts, you know, our hearts are, 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 are valuable things. If without a heart, we don't live. Isn't that right? Our hearts can be broken. Our hearts can be uh, melted. Our hearts, uh, you know, when you see that, those little puppies on and, and Facebook, you know, when you see those little cute puppies and, oh, you get those, yeah, I want to go buy one. No, I, I don't, I can't buy one. <laughs> or you see little kittens, it, it melts your heart. For some people, it's goats. You see a goat and it's like, my wife loves goats and, and her heart melts for for these goats. I mean, that's a good thing. That's, that's what our heart is, our heart. But the good, the bad news is our hearts can be broken. The good news is Jesus can heal our hearts. He can mend our broken hearts. And, um, and you know what? Our hearts can get the best of us sometimes. Sometimes we follow our heart and, and it's, it's not, it, it, was, it steered us in the wrong direction. How dare you steer me in the wrong direction, heart? But guess what, friends? Guess what? It's your heart. That is so vital to your walk of faith. It's so vital, it's so important to God. God cares about your heart so much. But listen, listen to this. God told King Saul that his reign as king was over. Something happened that King Saul was not doing something right. And you can find this in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. God, God tells Saul that he has found a man after his own heart. He found a man after his own heart. God's heart. God has a heart. That's, that's good to know, isn't it? That our God, who, who created the heavens and the earth, who uh, knows every number of hairs on our head, to, to how many skin cells we have on our skin, he, he knows everything. He, he's everywhere. Our God, He has a heart. Which means when He looks at a picture of a dog or a picture of a cat or a picture of a goat, His, his heart goes, ah. When He sees you, He knows you. He sees you. He knows what's happening. He sees your circumstance. And no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation is, no matter who you are, God's heart goes, ah, oh, that's my child. Friends, know who you are in, in God today. Well, he found a man after his own heart, and his name was David. Imagine that somebody had the heart of God. And when you read about David, though, he does not have the purest of hearts, nor the purest of intentions. And, but God called him a man after his own heart. Friends, it's because David obeyed God's commands and responded accordingly. And when he messed up, and boy does he mess up, <laughs> he does something. He asks for forgiveness. 
Did he do it again? He sure did. But how he responds each time is important. Why? Because he acknowledges the wonder of God. He, he acknowledges that God is powerful and omnipotent. And, and, and he, can't, he can't describe the characteristics of God with words or, or, or put them into words. The, the beauty of God's love. But his heart is in line with the heart of God. A lawyer came up to Jesus and, and tried to put him in a, in, in, in a, in a situation uh, to answer a question that would refute his, 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 the kingdom of heaven on earth. And Jesus answers this lawyer's questions in Matthew 22, verses 36 to 39. The teacher uh, asks, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first command. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Friends, when it all comes down to it, it's all about loving God and loving God one another. Loving, like the, uh, the illustration of the, the goose, they, they honk from behind to encourage one another. The, 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 the words that we speak will either encourage somebody, will either strengthen their heart, or it will break their heart and tear them apart. The words and the actions and the things that we do will either encourage God's heart or it will break his heart. I, I can ask you this question. Where is your heart? Are you in line with God? Are you in line with God's heart? I told you earlier that God, when he sees people, when he sees you, he sees you where you're at. You might be doing really well today. You might be you might be financially blessed and, and, and your job is stable and, and your family is healthy and nobody's sick and, and things are going just, just wonderful. You're at, the, you're at the top of the world. That's awesome. God is in, in love and encouraging and he's on top of the world with you. But even if you're on the other side of that hill and things were going downwards and busyness and stress and strife and angst and all these things, our sorrows and all these things, all the things that the world can trouble us with. God sees where you're at and he hears your cry. He, he sees your tear. Not a tear hits the ground without him knowing, friends. That's who our God is. And, and God wants us to respond to him. He says, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And so, when I went to this, this, this EPI, this Emerging Pastors Initiative, I was encouraged. But not only was I encouraged, but I had confirmation in my heart that I was being obedient to God in coming to this wonderful town of Wawa. You know, someone once asked me, what does it... What, why pastor? Why, why be part of the faith community? Why, why pastor a church? And, and, I, and my simple answer, if, if, I can, if I can make it as simplest as anything, someone once referred this illustration to me and it went like this. Suppose a building was on fire and my family or, or my friend, my loved one, was caught in that building. Would I run to save them? If I had that opportunity to love my neighbor as myself, would I do it? Friends, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. 
there's all kinds of jobs out there that I could do. I could, I, I'm, I'm, I, I love music and I love art. I love, I love working with my mind and, and engineering. And I, I love math and I, I, there's all these wonderful things that, that sure I might, I might be good at in this world. But one day God called me to run into a burning house and save someone. You know what? Walla may not be on fire. But I know that I know that I know that I know is there are people who need to know how much God loves them. And so that's why I'm here in Walla. I want to love God with all my heart, soul, and mind. And I want to love my neighbors, my friends, my community that surrounds Wawa and the great Wawa Goose. I, I want to leave you with this one last verse. It comes from Psalm chapter 51, verse 10. David cries out, Create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. That's my prayer for you today. That God creates in you a pure heart. But you need to want it. You need to ask for him. Maybe that's your prayer. God created me a pure heart. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, I pray for my friends today. Thank you for their moments of time to listen to this message of, of hope, this message of courage, this message of encouragement to their hearts. Bless them, keep them safe, keep all our first respondents and essential workers, keep them safe today we pray. And Lord, as you continue to wipe out this virus, wipe out this COVID-19, Father God, Lord, we, we continue to put our trust and faith in you. Lord, draw more and more people in community to follow after you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed day.